brought some fans with you. What's going on? It's Kevin Kenny. This is the Build Series. It's loud in here. Wow. It's like a boy band stopped by or something. Uh, the band to my side has been together for almost two decades now. They're coming off a sold-out gig at Beacon Theater here in New York City in their seventh studio album. All for Money is out everywhere this Friday. Please give it up for Green Sky Bluegrass. We have babies in the audience. That's a first. I've never seen that. That's amazing. Who was at the show, by the way? Wow, look at that. That's incredible. Yeah, selling the beacons, no joke. We were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys were too. We all were there. of you, right? Yeah, all of us were there. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, sometimes it's best to start these conversations with maybe the dumbest of questions, but I'm thinking about maybe the pop fan watching right now or the hip hop fan watching, uh, looking to learn more about you guys. Dumbest question about what is bluegrass? <laughs> Just let's start there before we dive into the record. Uh, it's like music. Um, Pretty much. With instruments, which may be foreign to some people these days. I mean, instruments in general. Yeah. You know, like musical instruments that you play, not just like turntables or yeah. other people's. Or a laptop. Yeah. yeah. Other, you know, uh, wooden, wooden instruments, even. Wooden instruments. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, tr it's a pretty old traditional music um, from a long time ago. Um, and traditionally has banjos and mandolins, which are two things that we have, acoustic guitars, dobros, fiddles, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So... It's a pretty uh, strictly defined genre, which we have uh, taken upon ourselves to completely bastardize. Um, and uh, it's been really fun, because we've sort of taken those instruments and turned it into a bit of rock and roll. Yeah. Um, today, when we play it later, we're gonna, it's going to be really bluegrassy, because it's, we're doing it kind of like the old way, where the five of us are essentially standing around a single microphone. Like That's, that's kind of the way it was. That's not the way we do it at a show, but that's how we're going to do it here. So when I say we bastardize bluegrass, today we're not, we're going to like, you know, semi-bastardize. Am I allowed to say that word? It's the internet. Cool. It's the internet? Yeah. Cuss up a storm. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I mean, is there a little bit of like punk rock in, in putting bluegrass in the name of your band when you're, when you set out to sort of bastardize the genre? Well, that's why the other half of our name is the opposite of bluegrass. Right. Balance. But naming, I mean, take us back to naming the band that. I mean, there had to be. Uh, it was a joke of a friend of ours. I was uh, a friend of ours in Kalamazoo who yeah, it was played a total mandolin. Joke uh, these guys were already calling themselves Green Sky Bluegrass when I met them. I mean, you've been a band for two decades now. How, how far back do you guys actually know each other? Uh, the three of us, the banjo player Bob back there. It's <laughs> 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 happening right we know each other us. now. Yeah. Uh, Dave started playing together in the fall of 2000. Okay. So, almost 20 years. Right. But yeah, none of you have Dave and I have actually known each other for 20 years. Really? Last fall, yeah. And then, and like, when the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but, the, but for the thing about the thing about it, that it's been, like, 20 years as a band, like, that's... Because when they met, the band, like, started for real, because there was a name instantly because of whatever the, the someone named it, right? I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, somebody... And so, so it's weird... To, to think, I mean, is it weird for you to think that Green Session played for 20 years? Yeah, especially <laughs> because that's probably when I started playing guitar at the same time. <laughs> right. was, you know. Is this really like the first musical project you ever did? No, I was a drummer. Okay. Oh, so you just started playing guitar. A friend of mine gave me a guitar, and I made a joke that if I ever played guitar, I'd play bluegrass guitar, and here I am. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joke's, Joke's on, on you. you. Yeah. <laughs> We were saying before we went live, though, like, you don't think in terms of years, right? I'm, I keep harping on this two decades thing, how long you've been together. It's, it's a testament to longevity. A lot of bands aren't as fortunate as you guys. But what do you, do you really think in terms of anything? I mean, we, you know, <laughs> other than the music. Like, other than the huh. music. <laughs> yeah. um, well, you were talking about set, like, the, you, you, I mean, the way that this conversation kind of came up right before we went on. He was saying, so this is your seventh album coming out. And we are all like, whoa. And you legit counted. <laughs> yeah. Let me see the Yeah. Because um, I don't really think of it in terms of that. Not for any reason. Not like, not for any neg negative reason. You know, it's like just, I tend to think of us as like the next tour, the next show, like the next thing. Um, I don't spend a lot of time looking backwards and measuring it for any way like that. But that could just be personally me. But, um, you know, 20 years, seven albums, that sounds like. We should be good or something. I don't know. So I just kind of, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's easier uh, to say maybe tomorrow we well, got this. I mean, I think that's a really cool and healthy approach to, to being in a band is just worrying about tomorrow. But then there's a song, the title track, All For Money, where who wrote that song? I did. Paul wrote it. 
that's a song where you're sort of contemplating like this journey you're on. And I think that there is a great amount of thought put into that song. Was that something you wrote vicariously thinking about maybe somebody else or was that autobiographical? Uh, it's very much about the band and our relationship with the fans and uh, relationship to a band as a career. Um, it's kind of a joke because I mean, if the song is about not doing it for money. It's about doing it for other reasons and grander ones. Um, I kind of wanted to capture this idea that like uh, the burden of success, sort of. And I, I kicked around the idea for a long time because I, did, I don't want to sound ungrateful in any way because we love doing this. Um, but there's kind of like a careful what you wish for sort of thing. You know, like I think back to like when we were an early band and we were playing these dive bars and uh, we had to like win people over. And that was fun, you know, like, but appeasing people who already have expectations is maybe harder. Uh, and I just started to kind of like really think about it a lot. And um, this is the result of this song. It took me a while though because it's slippery territory, you know? Right. How how do you or how have you navigated it successfully? Because you talk about that in the song to paraphrase. It's like, why don't you like my new stuff? You sort of cry out at one point, right? It, it's how have you maintained a fan base for so long? Because uh, and and also remained satisfied as artists for two, almost two decades now. I think that's it. It's that we're satisfied. Um, I think we're fans of ourselves and we enjoy it. Uh, and I think that that's. But you know that doesn't always link up with what the fans think, right? Like what you want to do and what the music you want to make doesn't always correspond to what people want to pay money to see. Yeah, well, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, I mean, you know, opinions are like opinions, you know? Yeah. What's, what's that saying? <laughs> <clears throat> the saying is opinions are like assholes. <laughs> I mean, beep, uh, everybody's got one and everybody thinks everyone else's stinks. At least that's my version of it. Um, I heard the second half of that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's my second half. I don't know. I like that. I like it too. That's why I said it here on this show. Sorry about the, saying the word assholes. Um, twice. <laughs> um, we don't count albums, but we do count that. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it, you know, it, Paul's right. I think that we, if we're satisfied with what we're doing, that's, that's the most important thing. And like, um, we were playing the Beacon on Saturday, and it's like this beautiful historic room where so many great bands have played. And um, I'm going through this thing that I've been sort of noticing and talking about a fair amount, but we haven't talked about it. Where, um, like, the idea of a place like that, or all these beautiful, amazing, huge venues we're playing and selling, like, selling them out and stuff. It's like uh, the idea is that you're supposed to embrace this, and everyone's like, "Man, you're playing at the Beacon, just like really soak it up." and like feel that feeling. And for me, to navigate it best, if I start thinking too much about that, I get freaked out. And I'm like, what, the, you know, like, <laughs> this is crazy. Act a certain yeah, way it's like, this, this is crazy, you know, like, I, you know, this it was just me and four of my friends, you know, just hanging out playing music. And for me, if I look at it that way, it's a lot easier <laughs> than trying to think about all the crazy, you know, it's like playing three nights at Red Rocks in Colorado, it's like a huge place. and. And that, you know, if that, if I start thinking about that, I'm like, damn, this is crazy. So I, tr I don't think about it. I just try and play music, you know. And it's, but then there's, you know, you see what I'm saying. There's sort of a weird thing with that where I should think about it. But yeah. Anyway, if that's it. I think yeah, me. he's talking about trying to like live up to whatever hype or and and our. You're talking about our fans' expectations, and I think what Paul's saying, kind of more or less, too. It it would be impossible to continue to create music trying to serve the you know, varied tastes and preferences of our fan base, we kind of just, I think they are looking to us to kind of just, like, follow music and grow musically how on our course. Right. Um, and we hope, we always hope they like it, but to stay together and true to what we do, I don't think we could ever make it about satisfying them. Well, it's almost like you guys are the hype, right? Living, you're talking about living up to the hype. It's like, no, like, they came to see, you're at the beacon because they came to see whatever the heck you guys are going to do. So, yeah. He's going to get lost. Yeah, thanks. That's thanks. a good way to relate it. Thank, Thank you. you. That helps me. Thanks for <laughs> riding helpful. along. Uh, I know we don't count albums, but this is the seventh album, and I'm curious to ask, heading into the seventh album, is it, is it more about improvement as a band, or is it more about exploration as a band? Is it going somewhere you haven't been before, or is it really like fine-tuning aspects of, of being a group? I think it'd be a little bit of both. You know, I think we're all pretty adventurous when it comes to music and want to try new things and... You know, yeah, be, be better every time. What are some of those things you tried on this album? We used a lot of effects. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, lots of Do you weird, experiment lots of weird with, stuff. With technology? I mean, like we poo pooed, you know, laptops and turntables yeah. and whatnot, but I mean do you ever do you ever incorporate sort of the new technology into yeah. the music? Yeah. We're pretty high fidelity. Yeah. Yeah. We get big we use yeah, we use probably the most technology that I've ever seen anyone on acoustic instruments use. <laughs> I mean, I don't get out much, but uh we, yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of effects, lots of amps, and like a lot of gear. You know, like we've got a full box truck that we travel around with. It's full of gear. You know, and um, I think that helps us explore. I mean, yeah, just the idea of possibilities and exploring kind of endless possibilities. That's what keeps us excited about it. To kind of get back to the question you're asking, Dave. You know, right. Right on. Um, no, please. Oh, I was just going to add that it's kind of interesting in our the recording process. There's modern technology too that recreates vintage sounds. So a lot of like uh, gear that our engineers are using in the studio are actually um, digital interfaces for versions of gear that is old technology, sort of. So that's sort of an interesting like play on sort of this kind of what we're doing. A lot of it is making old sounds in new ways, kind of. Uh, yeah. We had Ace Freely on the show, and like you'd imagine a guy like that who recorded a certain type of way for the majority of his career to sort of like have a real, uh, you know, aversion to technology. But he was like, he actually thought the technology, like you were talking about, like making it sound, how do you say this? Making it sound like the old way, but only better. Yeah, yeah. He was like a big fan of that, so I don't know. Yeah. It all goes into making the uh, the record we're getting on Friday. Uh, I really enjoyed just from the pre releases that you guys put out, this, the storytelling in these songs, and at the risk of over intellectualizing the music that you guys have given us. Lyrically, of course, you can tell what you guys are trying to tell us. But then uh, I think about a song like Courage for the Road. That's a song where there's this great like breakdown, this jam session in the middle of the song. If you could say, like, what are you trying to tell us at that part of the song? Interesting. Uh, we're just jamming, man. <laughs> but now if you, if you would ask that question about the all for money, the weirdness, like that's uh, that was like a more I had a, a more of an idea. Uh, for that is to like to create discomfort and to like put you in the place. It's part of that's part of the story in that song. Um, you know that feeling of being overwhelmed and trapped or something that I was trying to convey, and then turns around. But uh, man, I don't know what the feeling we're conveying in that fun. I think yeah, get loose. Okay. Yeah, let's take your shoes off and slide around with broom. You know. Heck yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <It's> like foot <laughs> with broom. Footloose, man. Oh, cool. I was just picturing something different. Oh, he's like dancing in the slides with the broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I bet I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, get your Kevin right? Bacon on. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah. I Kevin, put, there's a picture of Kevin Bacon back there. Yeah. Seven degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Seven degrees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, you know, with the, with like that Courage for the Road Jam in the middle of that, like, um, this album, we're trying to, it's less about trying to um, make something that is going to be like a hit or, I don't know, I mean, I guess that's not necessarily true, but that's the kind of jam that we would do live. And we and traditionally, we would not necessarily put that on one of our albums. <clears throat> Excuse me. We would, um, we would, or traditionally what we've done, or historically what we've done is, just put, sort of put something in there that's going to hint that when we play that song live, there's going to be a 10-minute jam in there. And the fans will know that, like, oh, we can see where this is going to go when we get to live. And on this album, we're sort of like, well, let's just do what we would do live. Like, why why pretend? You know, like, people seem to like that. And uh, let's go for it. So that was kind of the deal with that, like, that particular jam. Right. And and taking your shoes off and sliding around with <laughs> brooms. What? The broom sticks the microphone. Okay, I was not picturing that. I'm sorry. We need brooms would... at the merch table now. Yeah. We created a, yeah. a monster there. Um, do you guys start when you're recording an album, recording a song? Does it start with a live show in mind? This album kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. You can what you concur? Is, <laughs> is there more I should say? No. <laughs> I was pretty to the point, I thought. Uh, you guys are big deadheads, huh? Big fans of the dead? Am I wrong to say that? Grim some claps. Yeah, we like a lot of music for sure. But yeah, absolutely. But they got to be at the top of the list, right? I mean, up your there first sure. concert was was a Grateful Dead, right? Yeah. Uh, if you had to say, like, what, what's something from the dead that you think artists today could learn? 
Oh, Either or, toss up. Something about the dead. You know, it took a long time actually for me personally to like get it. I guess more or less. Um, there's a looseness and like ebb and flow with them that maybe just didn't appeal to me right away. But then now that's what it is that I do love about them. It's just the the way that they no m- two moments are the same. The way that they're listening. It's mo- it's about the listening. The way they're listening to each other and reacting on the spot to all the inflections of the other players. And I think. That's something that we're all always striving to do, and for anyone that just like listening and being in tune with what your partners are doing on stage, I think is hugely important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, Jerry was the main reason why I play the banjo. So. Uh, <laughs> anything you think that modern acts can borrow from Jerry, or just the dead overall? Um, basically, yeah, Ed, what he said, just yeah. like their their sense of improvisation, and they're they're able to push and pull the music in this this way, you know. I, I feel like that's a lot of like what we try to achieve. Yeah. Uh, we're about four days away from All For Money being out and available everywhere. You guys have been very generous in giving us, I think, three to four, uh, as they say, instant grad tracks, these pre-releases. If we go down the line, though, in closing here really quickly, just what's one track that is not out yet you're very excited for fans to hear on Friday? It's not mine anymore. Okay. It should be pretty interesting to get that out. All right. It's metal. Really? <laughs> Wish I Didn't Know is another one that's... What do we have? How many? Are oh, there's a lot that coming out. So. There's only three left we haven't played live. Yeah, three um, left we haven't played live, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for people to hear Wish I Didn't Know, too. That was, that was fun recording that. We recorded that song in one day. Sometimes we work on stuff for a little while and then leave it and come back to it. But that song, we just did one whole day. And it changed a lot over the course of the day. It was really fun. Huh. It didn't even like exist in the morning, almost, <laughs> really? is how it felt. Like We're like, what are we going to do with this? these ideas? And then when we left, we're like... Here's the song then. <laughs> so it's gonna be the quickest we hadn't heard song that came yesterday. together for the record, huh? Well, <laughs> I don't know. A day is a long time. <laughs> three three <laughs> and a half minute song, but yeah, f- but fourteen hours. Um, yeah, I, those two songs I'm psyched for people to hear. Um, oh, getting back to the dead thing real quick. My yeah. my takeaway is, <laughs> don't be afraid to fall on your face. Like they they would, those guys took musical risks and just like. It didn't always turn out great, and that's my takeaway. And maybe, you know, whether that's helpful for other people or not, I don't really care, but that's my takeaway. Right. Um, I like that. I like that. Uh, those two, what other song? What, what song Arm. are you excited for people to hear? Bont? Um, I kind of like Wish I Didn't Know. I thought for the same reason, you know, just because <laughs> it, it was like nothing in the morning and it was a song at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. And, that's awesome. Uh, we're going to get to some fan Sleeper. questions right now. <laughs> and uh, this first one comes from Twitter. It comes from uh, user at That's So Page. Uh, they want to know what live concert you attended, not your own, inspired you over the past year. Do you guys have time to go to concerts? I was just thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, what right? concert have I been to in a year? Um, is it true, not to hijack the question, is it true you guys played 175 shows last year? No. Nah. Negative. Negative? No. We might I read we, that somewhere. Well, that's no, that's probably, probably the year before or okay. something. <sighs> But it's good to just keep that stat because it yeah. makes it sound cool. It worked until now you ask the question. Yeah, you have yeah. to say no. Just uh, lie. One yeah. million shows. Uh, let's see. I really like uh, I went and saw this band, The Bahamas, and I'm in love with the record. I listened to it 58 hours or something like that this year. Uh, and I think it kind of inspired that wish I didn't know uh, idea. There's like a sequence thing that happens. He does a lot of this cool, like, Afro pop kind of like trancey stuff with his band, um, and I was real inspired by it. Um, yeah. All right, the Bahamas. If you haven't listened to Bahamas, I recommend it highly. Is it Bahamas or the Bahamas? I think it's just Bahamas. Cool. Yeah. Uh, any other concerts that you guys have been out to over the past year? Not really. I mean, yeah. I'm really not sure. I've been to, I've been to a concert in a year. I don't. Yeah. It's just kind of sad. I think the only concert I did see was Paul Simon. Ooh. And that was that, that was actually yeah. really inspiring. What a concert. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, it's usually, you know, it's not like going to a concert, but it's like, you know, we, at festivals, we see a ton of bands. Um, oh, good point. And we, uh, for me, the Tedeschi Trucks band is always a band that just flattens me every time. Uh, oh, hey, you like them too? Cool. You I, th- I think maybe J-Rad too, as a band, we've talked about when we go see, when we go see J-Rad, that like kind of the Grateful Dead thing you're talking about, that they, they're so fearless when they play, just doing all this crazy stuff. Uh, and yeah. it's a great word for them. We've talked about you know how important when you're improvising to play without fear. Uh, they're amazing. Right on. Yeah. Uh, let's get to some of these fan questions. The first one is going to come from right over here, I think, front row. Oh, hey you guys. got a microphone. Hey, hi. Um, what is your favorite festival you'll, uh, y'all have played at, or top three if you can't pick one? 
Top, top 30? Top three. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, geez. Well, I think the, at the top of the list is probably Camp Green Sky in Michigan. <laughs> I'm not full of myself, though. I swear. I really love uh, Telluride Bluegrass. I think we all do. Like every, We get to play that one every year. We feel pretty fortunate to get up in those mountains. It's the view from the stage that really makes it, I think. But. Yeah, I'm going to call Strings and Soul as my favorite festival because I wanted to say really quickly before someone else does that I'm off the hook. Uh, that's just something we do in... Uh, we do it in Mexico on a beach, and uh, it's us and a bunch of bluegrass-ish other bands, and it's like a week-long vacation with a lot of cool people and all your friends, and you play a bunch of music. That's my favorite, in, in addition to the ones that already got mentioned. I like playing them all. Festivals are great for musicians because it's when we get to go see music. You know, like we're... I, I always joke about, like... When we made this decision to do this, no one warned me that I would never be able to go see music on a Friday or Saturday night anymore. Uh, so festivals where we can go see music is fun. Uh, we played Bonnaroo a couple times, and I always enjoy that because it's like we get the, the opportunity to see so much stuff that we don't normally see. Uh, like Strings and Soul that he mentioned, the bands that are on that lineup, we, they're like our tour family. We see them every weekend at all the same, all the <laughs> different festivals. But then we're at Bonnaroo and watching Eminem or something. And it's awesome. When you guys are at a festival, I'm so curious, like, when you're checking out bands, is it, like, something you got to do after the set, or do you do it before the set? Does it not matter, like? Before, after, whenever, yeah, yeah. Whenever yeah. during, it's, whenever it's uh -huh. happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where did Paul go? I was wondering about that. Walking well, I, was like that, I was thinking of that summer camp set we played where the bass from the tent next to us was so loud. It's like I was listening to that show and playing our show at the same time. Yeah. Multitasking up there. Uh, we got time for a couple more. Let's get to our second fan question right here. Did you enjoy playing Japan? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah, we didn't mention If you were just like, Fuji. no. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, you know, the, the Japanese culture, they're, like, real quiet and attentive and stuff, and we were kind of, like, warned about that up front. And I was wondering, like, what it was going to feel like on stage. If it was going to be nerve-wracking to have them. Because we kind of like it that our crowd is kind of rowdy and having a party. It takes a little pressure off us. Like, they're not hearing everything. Uh, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. I'm out of tune. Uh, go get it. But uh, it was there was so much energy, even with like them being so quiet and most of them so still. Uh, shocked me, and it was beautiful. It was awesome. Uh, time for one more, I believe. Yes. I've been instructed to stand here. Ah. Hey guys. Hi. Thanks for being here. Um, so I'm curious if you would ever consider dropping the bluegrass from the green sky name. Do we you work for our manager? <laughs> <laughs> I work in marketing, uh, <laughs> so it's yeah. crossed my mind. Yeah, We've sort of talked about it on a, uh, there was a point in our career where we sort of made a choice that we weren't going to really pursue this like classically bluegrass path. Um, and we have over the years discussed it. And I think that it's kind of just our name. And we, we, we hoped that it would become ironic that we're called bluegrass. And I think we've achieved that. So, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller on our merchandise, more or less. Um, I would also like to point out that in case you've missed it, even when Paul said it already, the opposite of bluegrass, the word, is green sky. Okay? So if we were, you know, so the pun is there. And whether it's, that's kind of the important part to me. Like, we are bluegrass, and we are the opposite of it at the same time. And... It's important that people get that, and even when they don't, it's like we, we call it the aha moment. When people are like, oh, I get it, green sky, bluegrass. And you're like, yeah, you've been listening to this for like five years, huh? Cool. You're like, um, Do you but, think we should? But I think... I think if you want it really, real big, yeah. I think it would help. Okay. Well, you're fired. But, <laughs> but I like the small venues. <laughs> well, can I ask a follow-up? <laughs> I am also... I thought you were fired. <laughs> Go I'm on. wondering if you guys would ever consider playing a wedding. <laughs> it, uh, My. Yeah, <laughs> your wedding. <laughs> Is your daddy rich? <laughs> I know friends in the music industry. Would that help? Nah, we're getting somewhere. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> All right, we'll talk. I just had a business meeting on Bill. That was yeah, great. that's good. <laughs> but do, you want, right. do you want Green Sky Bluegrass like to play it. it or just Green Sky? I, I like mean, your come tactic. On. <laughs> okay. Whatever you'll give me. All right. 
Now we're asking the tough questions. All right. Uh, thank you once again to Green Sky Bluegrass. The new album, the seventh, All For Money, is out everywhere Friday. And if you're joining us on live on build, uh, buildseries.com, I should say, these guys are going to uh, stick around and play us a few songs. So thank you very much for that. Everyone else, we'll see you soon. Thank you.